Hi there, and welcome to our webinar. Today we'll be looking at Managing Potato Virus Fly. My name is Carrie Belanger, and I'm the editor of SpudSmart Magazine and SpudSmart.com, and today I'll be acting as your moderator. First, I'd like to thank our sponsors, McCain Foods and BASF, for their support. I'd also like to note a few housekeeping items. This webinar is being recorded and will be made available on spudsmart.com following the event. For audio quality purposes, all microphones have been muted, with the exception of the speakers. But we do welcome your input. So if you have a question or comment, please share it in the chat box at the bottom left of your screen and let us know to whom your question is directed. Today, we have two speakers who will talk about managing potato virus Y. Dr. Mathuresh Singh is the Director of Agricultural Certification Services for Potatoes New Brunswick, and Anne McRae is a Technical Service Specialist for Insecticides and Horticulture Products at BASF Canada. We'll be starting with Mathuresh, who will talk about how to plan today to manage PVY, also management tools for PVY, what challenges growers are facing with respect to PVY, and new tactics researchers are developing to fight PVY. Then we'll hear from Anne, who will talk about a product currently being reviewed for registration for the control of piercing and sucking pests, such as aphids. Now, we're ready to begin with our first speaker, Dr. Mathuresh Singh. Please begin, Mathuresh. Thank you, Kari. Um, welcome, everyone, um, on this uh, webinar um, on planning to manage PBY. It's uh, kind of a little late in season, but uh, anyway, it's never hard to have more knowledge uh, for next year. So. Uh, my talk is uh, uh, divided into four uh, different sections, as uh, Kari mentioned. Uh, we'll be talking about first the major consideration in PBY management plan, and then what are the different tools for PBY management, and then what challenges growers are now facing with PBY, and, and what the research being done to uh, mitigate those uh, risks. Uh, most of the uh, data I'll be presenting throughout my webinar is uh, from New Brunswick. That's where I work, and uh, we have done uh, extensive work for PBY management in, in New Brunswick. So uh, what are the major considerations in PBY management plan? Uh, PBY um, does come from, from somewhere uh, in, in, in the field. Uh, to infect potato crops. So there must be a, a source. Um, first slide, please. Uh, there must be a, a source uh, coming uh, from either sea or from, uh, from a neighboring uh, field or through, uh, through, through uh, uh, inoculum uh, source from outside. And and once it, it comes in the field, um, then it starts uh, multiplying, and then and then it has the effect on the uh, the crop harvest. Uh, slide number uh, ten, please. So, as I mentioned, most of the, uh, the uh, inoculum comes from seed. Then neighboring field, it could come from volunteer plants. Also, it could be from weed or cull piles. And then once it gets in the field, it reduces the yield. And also, it could cause some uh, failure in seed certification where the virus cap is, is necessary. And also, it reduces the uh, quality of potatoes where it causes necrosis. Uh, Number 11, please. So if some of you can see the, the slide here, um, the table which I have, um, that's based on, uh, on New Brunswick uh, uh, data from uh, almost last uh, eight, nine years. 
if you see in 2011, we had we had only 35% seed, which was between zero and one percent, and and last year up to 2017 crop, we got to almost close to 92%, and so that happened because because of uh, implementation of a post harvest testing program, and also our growers have started using extensive management tools, which we'll discuss later on. And because of because of planting clean seed, our post harvest testing has been uh, giving us very good result. Slide number 12, please. So if you see um, the next slide, you can see the green uh, graph there, which indicates that uh, from 2009 up to 2017, uh, that line has been going, and that indicates the, the amount of clean lots tested in New Brunswick. If you see on right-hand side in the table, um, we have been testing somewhere from 500 up to uh, 700, depending on what year it is, uh, uh, lot. And the, in 2009, we had average PBY close to 12 percent, but in 2016, it got to uh, only 0.43 percent. In 17, we had a little blip, uh, which went up, but then uh, we're hoping this year should go down. So. If you if you see from uh, like from 2009 to 2017, uh, the the more than one percent of PBY which were planted before has gone almost seven times lower than what it used to. So that that happened because of uh, several factors. Uh, number 13, please. So the, one of the best management tool is to plant really uh, clean seed or with low PBY, which is the most cost-effective way to reduce PBY at, at the harvest. The, so this planting... Uh, Low PBY strongly reduces uh, PBY at harvest, and given the yield effect of PBY, the risk of failing seed certification, where cap is required, for example, like in New Brunswick, uh, you cannot plant more than 4% PBY, or for example, in PEI, you can cannot plant more than 3% PBY. So in that case, is um, you save your seed lot from from decertifying, and next slide, please. So, if you plant PV, uh, low PBY, you can avoid the potential uh, uh, high risk of PBY. Uh, if you see in this graph here, um, as as I mentioned before, the the majority of PBY comes either from the seed lot or it comes from the other neighboring field. Uh, based on some of the data which we have collected from New Brunswick, uh, most of the farms here are mixed farms. They, they, some farms, they plant only seed, but their majority of farms, they plant either uh, table stock or processing potatoes on their farm. And if you see the green bar, those growers who only produce high quality seed, the PBY level on their farm is quite low, it's less than 1%. But those farms which are producing uh, more than 30% um, farm as a seed and, and then less than 70% as a table are processing, they have a little higher. PBY, and, and those growers who are producing more than 70% of their field with table stock or processing and less than 30% for seed, they 
they have quite almost twice as much PBY compared to a seed grower. So that does indicate that even though they are planting good clean seed, but the the PBY is moving within uh, within their farm from different fields. Also, it could come from previous season carried over in cull piles or in field volunteers. So those kind of things should be avoided and by using some non-potato crops, uh, uh, which uh, means crop rotation also helps to reduce PBY. Next slide, please. So as we know, the PBY comes from seed, then from different fields, but how it, it moves from one field to the other field. So aphids is one of the main vectors for the transmitting of PBY. And there are almost 20%, uh, 60, 60 different species of, of PBY. Uh, aphids has been reported to carry PBY. They all transmit PBY at different degree, but, but most of them, they can carry PBY. So once it's transmitted between uh, fields, then it gets transmitted between plant to plant by uh, those aphids. And also, it could be uh, transmitted by some other mechanical means. So with the managing aphid between these potato uh, fields and plants, uh, we have done uh, extensive work on uh, horticultural mineral oil, or you can call it mineral oil, combined with insecticide spray, which will reduce the PBY transmission. Uh, if you read in literature, as such, PBY, uh, for PBY management, insecticide spray alone is not very effective, but we have found if we, if we combine mineral oil with insecticide, it could be very effective. Next slide, please. If you look at this graph here, uh, we uh, did some work in um, 2010 and 11, uh, collected several uh, uh, aphid uh, from different fields, and they were tested using a, a PCR uh, procedure. So red line indicates that the, these are the number of aphids which were already infected with PBY, or they carried PBY on their mouth part. And the, the blue line indicates that's the total number of aphids present during uh, the season. And the yellow bar in between, that's where the peak number of aphids were present. So if you see um, very early, the aphids can carry PBY, and then they can infect uh, uh, potato plant crop before even uh, some of the plants are emerged. Uh, this, this yellow bar indicates that that's where most of the growers used to start uh, uh, their spraying program with, with either oil or combined oil and, and insecticide, and that's uh, close to almost 50% plant emergence. So now, Based on this data, we started recommending to our growers that they should start spraying crop when there's 20 to 30 percent crop emergence, or even earlier, whenever it, they can get in the field. Next slide, please. So, if you look on this slide here, on on right hand side, there are six different uh, graphs there in in. And what it indicates that we had six different fields, and those six different fields were uh, sprayed with oil and mineral uh, and, and insecticide uh, two different times. The top three were where the spraying was done on June 29th, and the bottom three were where the spraying was done on June 15th. And if you see the difference between those two, Within two weeks uh, of the oil application, uh, the earlier field where uh, spraying was done on June 15th, the amount of PBY is almost half 
than what is in the other fields. Even though some of these fields, when they were planted in June, they had a lot more PBY in those fields, but it's still because of the early application of, of, of insecticide and mineral oil, the spread of PBY was quite low. So that indicates that if we go early in the field, we can better manage the, the uh, crop with, for PBY. Next slide, please. So since we started working on this problem in, in, in New Brunswick, the, the frequency of oil also is very important. Um, in, from 2010 to 2014, we did an extensive project on, in Grover's Field, and, and what we found that um, some of the fields were in this graph, which is blue, which says no spraying, uh, yellow is moderate spray, and, and red is intensive spray. Uh, blue means those fields were mostly or most of the fields were processing crop, and moderate spray were seed crops, and also intensive spray were the seed field. So in moderate spray, most of those growers, they sprayed six to seven times or eight times, but in intensive spray, those fields were sprayed 12 or 13 times uh, combined with oil and insecticide. And most of this oil was used as a tank mix, and it ranged from 1.5 to almost three liters per acre, but average is somewhere around two liters. As you can see, from 2010 to 2014, in, from 2013 and 14, most of the growers started doing extensive spray and amount of PBY, if you compare from 2010, has gone down quite a bit in 2014. And also, so those are the, those, that data we collected from the growers field, and then we took that and, and did a replicated trial uh, for three years, and we used two different uh, oil regimes. If you see the bottom graph there, you can see there is no spray, that's, that's a control. We had close to almost average 10% PBY in those control fields and insecticide only was not too far behind. So this indicates, as I mentioned before, insecticide alone does not really help to manage PBY. But where insecticide and oil was combined, in one case, uh, there was 1.5 liter oil spread all through season, and in other case, it was three liters started, and then after five application went back to 1.5 liter. And you can see, there was a huge difference between the no control or insecticide, and also mineral oil alone uh, affects the uh, PBY transmission as it was uh, quite lower than only insecticide, but when it's combined with, with oil and insecticide together, uh, the results are better. And, and some of the insecticide which we found was quite uh, effective. Um, one is the, uh, it belongs to lambda silothrin, that's a, usually called a silencer, or also it's called metador, and uh, belief, and, and some other pyrethroid. And the silencer is quite cheap insecticide, and, and it's very effective um, for, the, for the management of aphid along with the uh, oil. Next. Slide, please. So, those are the different management tools, which uh, based on the chemicals. But there are also uh, the other means of uh, uh, controlling PBY. So, really, what challenges growers are now facing with PBY? PBY is not one virus, but several other strains. Before, everybody knew as a common strain like PBYO which causes severe uh, mosaic symptom. But now there are three major uh, groups of 
uh, strains are one you can call common strain or one is necrotic strain and within necrotic strain there are two different strains which are very common it, it either is a PBY N O type or N Vilga type and the other one is N T N type which causes the necrotic spot on, on the tubers which you can see on the left hand side uh, this variety is cellular and AC cellular and where these necrotic rings are very prominent. And on the leaf panel, you can see there's a ranger russet, and, and those three different strains, they cause three different kind of uh, uh, symptoms there. So many, many of these um, strains, they can cause different kind of uh, symptoms depending on what variety uh, they are present in. Um, so, new potato varieties with unknown susceptibility to PVY, and also the the, the sifting oleability and cast of effective insecticide, and the climate change, they all together make it more uh, complicated. We have we have seen new potato varieties which are released each year. And, and, and they respond uh, differently to all different strains. So, and then based on different um, use of insecticide, that cost could go up. So, and, and the, with the climate change, there's a, the summer temperature is going up and then winter is very uh, mild. So lots of these aphids are surviving, so these, these things are making a little uh, complicated the PBY uh, management plan. As you can see here, we have a we have a, a, a table there where that's a just rough estimate of the cost of mineral oil and insecticide, uh, which does not include the labor and and also the the operating uh, cost for tractors and other things, uh, because most of the growers they are using. Um, uh, they are on uh, on a weekly program for late my management, and therefore, uh, when they go for spraying up some of the fungicide for the late blight, they would add uh, mineral oil and insecticide. So, roughly, it comes to about uh, depending on how many sprays are being used, it could be up to three three hundred fifty dollars uh, an acre. Next slide, please. So, in recently we have uh, we have just uh, finished a uh, a major project which was funded by uh, Science Cluster uh, through uh, CSC from Agriculture and Agri Food Canada, and it was supported by uh, different provincial organizations from from BC, Manitoba, Alberta, Quebec, uh, New Brunswick, and Ontario, where we we did uh, screen some of the uh, there actually there are 30 varieties we screened uh, using different uh, strains which we had collected from uh, all over Canada and uh, and also uh, we did some uh, field work where uh, the previous thing which I uh, explained to you um, about the insecticide and, and, and oil management, and also at the same time we explored the possibility of uh, mechanical transmission uh, during, the, uh, during the cultivation. And so within those 30 varieties, what we have found is uh, there are different range of symptoms, which I'll, I'll, I'll explain to you in the next slide. But this, where we found uh, the tractors uh, when are being used for the spraying of some of these are being used for the cultivation, uh, there are uh, some mechanical spread taking place in the field. And we had 
um, two rows where no tractor was passing through and in one case where the tractor was passing and we had planted some infected plant and we can see where the tractor was passing, it has three to four times higher uh, rate of transmission for PBY and particularly for necrotic strain in comparison to a control row where there was no um, tractor passing. So that explains some of the things where even if you plant low PBY, uh, it could be transmitted by aphid, but as well as with the tractor uh, as a mechanical uh, transmission. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned, uh, we have been uh, doing some work on, uh, on, on, on uh, per fight with PBY, understanding the symptom of major PBY, strain on different important varieties. As I mentioned, we cataloged about 30 varieties. We found only four varieties which showed symptom on uh, tubers, and, and rest were uh, not showing any symptoms on, on tubers, which is good news. We also uh, explored the other means of uh, uh, transmission, as I mentioned, uh, such as mechanical transmission, uh, and we are trying also to uh, identify some other effective insecticide at the low cost and, and which has low environmental impact. And we are also uh, helping uh, some of the work being done at uh, Agriculture Canada uh, for developing uh, different uh, resistant varieties against uh, some of these um, strains. Um, recently, we uh, um, we were involved in one of the projects which was done at the research center, which uh, they have uh, developed some mar markers which can be used to screen some of the germ germplasm which are being used for the for the breeding program and and for future. Uh, development of resistant varieties for PBY. So with, that, with this, I, I'll just uh, uh, summarize and emphasize that, that most of the work we have done in New Brunswick uh, and also in, in, in Manitoba has been on the management of PBY using uh, mineral oil and insecticide and we have found it very effective in, in, in two different uh, environments, such as Eastern and Western Canada. So with that, I would, next slide please, I would like to acknowledge uh, some of the help we received uh, for doing this uh, uh, collaborative project. Uh, it was mostly supported by AgriScience Cluster program through to CHC and also uh, enabling uh, agricultural research in New Brunswick and different collaborators from British Columbia, New Brunswick, and EI, Manitoba, and Alberta. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Mathresh. Uh, if anyone has questions for our guest speakers, please type them in the chat box at the bottom left of your screen indicating what your question is and to whom it is addressed. Uh, both of our speakers will have an opportunity to answer questions at the end of the next presentation. So in the next segment, Anne will talk about a new product from BASF. Take it away, Anne. Thanks very much. Hello, everyone, and uh, thank you for listening in today. I'm going to take this opportunity to give you a brief introduction to BASF's newest insecticide, Safina, which we believe will be a powerful new tool in the management of PBY. Safina insecticide's active ingredient is called Inscalus. It is currently being reviewed for registration in Canada for the control of piercing and sucking pests the key pest being aphids. Safina is on track to be registered for the 2019 season for use on both soybeans and potatoes. 
Two of Safina's key characteristics are the quick onset of feeding cessation and its extended duration of control. As was mentioned in the previous presentation with Dr. Singh, the primary problem with aphids and potatoes is that they vector pathogenic viruses, such as PVY. Secondary to that, aphids, when in high numbers, can cause wilting damage by sucking nutrients from foliage and stem tissue. By stopping aphid feeding quickly with Safina, we can reduce the risk of spreading harmful viruses like PVY and limit feeding damage for up to 21 days. The following is a close-up view of aphid feeding. The time at the bottom is in minutes and is sped up to show you how fast acting Safina can be. As you can see, the timer is counting down. At the zero mark, both Safina and the competitor insecticide are applied. One of the concerns that potato growers have in managing PVY is that many of the insecticides available to them work very slowly, giving more time for aphids to feed and spread the virus. I've heard this said once that aphids can't walk and chew gum at the same time. A moving aphid is not a feeding aphid, but a stationary aphid is a feeding aphid. The video shows how quickly Safina takes effect, around the 11 minute mark. So most likely when spraying your potatoes, it will be working before you have even left the field. This speed of activity is a benefit in the management of PVY. If an aphid cannot pierce the leaf, it cannot spread the virus. Safina will control both green peach aphid and potato aphid, both of which can be responsible for carrying PVY. Safina can offer extended control for up to 21 days because aphids are affected both when they come in contact with Safina when it is sprayed on them and when they ingest it from the leaf tissue. In this graph, although it is only one trial, it does illustrate the added control from Safina both early in that first week after application and by the third week after application, providing you with extended protection from aphids and the viruses that they carry. Safina is a neuromuscular disruptor in a new chemical class with a unique mode of action. This adds another tool for resistance management as there is no cross resistance to any other insecticides. This will allow potato growers to prevent the development of resistance or to manage populations that have already become to develop tolerance to other chemistries. There are approximately 30 IROC insecticide groups that can be broken down into three major classes. The first, are neuro neuromuscular disruptors, second, respiration disruptors, and the third is insect growth and development regulators. The first two, neuromuscular and respiration, are fast acting. Usually you see their effects within the first 24 hours. Growth and development regulators are slower acting, taking more than 24 hours to affect the insect pest. Safina, as we saw in the video, is fast acting and is a neuromuscular disruptor. So Safina's unique mode of action is not a neonic, pyrethroid, carbamate, or orga organophosphate, but is in a group called pyropenes and is the first to be classed in subgroup 9D. Safina is a cordotonal organ trip B channel modulator, which is a bit of a mouthful, and you're probably wondering what that even means. Basically, cordotonal organs are responsible for sensors in the antennae, mouth, legs, wings, and thorax. They provide insects with their senses of hearing, orientation, balance, and coordinated movement. When an aphid is exposed to Safina, sensory neurons send continuous and misleading signals. So the brain cannot detect sound, gravity, or body movement. The aphid will have odd sporadic movements, appearing drunk or dancing around, making it unable to pierce the leaf to feed and will eventually starve. So not only is Safina fast acting, 
and has a unique mode of action, but it is also, but it also has a very low impact on predatory and parasitic insects, such as lady beetles. By protecting our predatory insects, we leave them still available to move to other fields or to come back again and help us manage aphid populations later in the season. What makes Decena an excellent resource uh, is for your integrated pest management programs. Okay, I'd just like to thank everyone for hearing our brief review of Safina. And if anyone has further questions on Safina, please feel free to send me an email at ann.mccray at eass-exclusions.ca. Or if, you have, if you're looking for more information on some of the ASS horticulture products, you can check out the website at eggsolutions.ca slash horticulture. And thanks, everyone, for joining us. Well, thank you very much, Anne. Our speakers have provided some excellent information today, but I'd now like to invite the audience to ask questions of our speakers. Uh, please type your questions into the chat box at the bottom left of the screen. In the meantime, I have a question for Math Rush. What is troubling about the rapidly shifting PVY populations from the PVO strain to new recombinant strains? Um, uh, there are several things, um, like uh, symptoms of uh, newly dominant strains, uh, like PBYNO or Wilga type or NTN, is typically more uh, cryptic than PBYO, what uh, growers used to see as a strong mosaic symptom. And um, the other thing is these uh, strains, they, they can circumvent PBYU specific resistance, particularly like a, a hypersensitive uh, resistance, which is present in many varieties, and, and that could slow down the PBY transmission, and that's why we are seeing a lot more spread of other necrotic strains in comparison to PBYO. And also, PBY, NTN, and some of the other strains of, of uh, ANO or, or Wilga type, that can cause the tube and necrotic symptom in, in, in varieties, and that can make the whole crop uh, as unmarketable. Thank you, Mathresh. And what is the significance of this new insecticide to producers as a tool for managing PVY? Um, I think the biggest significance is uh, how fast acting it is. I, I think um, with the spread of PVY, basically when the aphids pierce that leaf and are feeding, they can spread that virus. So the faster we can stop them for, from feeding, the better, and the better we can control PVY. So I think fast acting along with uh, some resistance management because it has a unique mode of action, I think all of these things are really significant with Safina. Thank you, Anne. Mathuresh, where have the more necrotic strains of PVY been showing up in Canada? Um, based on uh, some of our work in the last few years, uh, uh, we collected some samples from Western Canada and Eastern Canada, and, and really, uh, few, uh, before I say for Canada, I'll say like in all over the world, uh, everywhere, the necrotic strains are spreading faster than the, the common strain, and common strain, of, I mean, PBYO is almost disappearing. So what we found is uh, in, in Western Canada, we're finding more uh, ANO or, or Wilga type of strain, and in Eastern Canada, we're finding more NTN type of strains, uh, whereas in, in U.S. also, these NTN and, and N Wilga type uh, are spreading, uh, spreading faster than the other strains in, in most of the states and in the province, as I said, in Canada. Thank you. And do you have any application tips for growers when it comes to spraying Safina? Sure. Um, yeah, so Safina is a uh, translaminar. So that means when you apply it to the leaf, it will spread from the top to the bottom. However, it's not systemic, so it won't move up the plant. 
when applied. So we really recommend um, that coverage is important and you need enough, your water volume needs to be high enough that you're covering that whole plant um, to make sure you uh, get the best results possible. So that would be, that would be my recommendation is coverage is important. Thanks. Thank you, Anne. Matharesh, what is the most important thing growers can do to prevent yield and quality loss from PBY? Um, the first uh, and most important thing is really uh, planting uh, on good, clean um, seed or with low PBY seed. And also, as I mentioned, uh, uh, the extensive program of uh, using uh, uh, mineral oil and, and insecticide has really worked in our case in New Brunswick and also based on some of the trials we did in Manitoba. So if they start spraying their crop early when there is 20 to 30 percent uh, crop emergence, uh, earlier the better and that way you can protect your entire crop. So when I say it's 20, 30 percent, that means your crop is still like 20% was exposed, but then you can prevent your 70 to 80% of crop. And uh, But if you start those sprays later, like after 50 or 60% um, uh, emergence, then your 50 or 60% crop were really exposed to, to PBY infection in the beginning. So, so those are the two really most important things uh, growers can do uh, now to reduce the yield with PBY. Thank you, Mathresh. And why is it important to protect this new chemical class and its unique mode of action? I think it's important um, for us to uh, protect as much as we can all of our chemistries by uh, rotating these chemistries. And um, especially with this new mode of action, if, you know, it's an excellent tool for PVY management, if we sort of abuse what we have um, by overusing it, then we don't get to use it as long as we could. So um, yeah, I think uh, protecting all of our chemistries by making sure um, we're rotating our groups, that it's extremely important. Thank you, Anne. Math Rash, uh, will the recent PMRA decision on Lambda Cyhalothrin impact growers' ability to control PVY? Uh, yes, um, we're very concerned about that. Um, as I mentioned, the number one insecticide being used in, in New Brunswick, and I know in, in some other provinces, it belongs to that uh, lambda cyhalothrin, and mostly it's a silencer, a silencer or metadose. And that's one of the uh, cheapest insecticides and very effective against the against the most species of aphid. So, if it's banned, we really don't have any alternative um, right away to use in place of silencer. And I say it's very effective, also very cheap. If you compare the price-wise, um, in as based on some of the information we got from the growers, uh, it can cost maybe about $15 to $20 per spray, but if you use other insecticide like Belief, uh, that could be maybe $45, $50 an acre. So there would be a huge uh, uh, economic loss uh, as well as the effectiveness for the PBY, uh, PBY management if that, if that decision um, comes from PMRA to ban uh, uh, silencer. Thank you, Mathresh. Um, while we're on the topic, what is the return on investment with mineral oil and insecticide applications? Um, depending on what uh, variety you're talking about, but some of the examples I can give you, like uh, um, a variety Russet Narcota and Russet Burbank, um, there has been some work done in the U.S. and also in Canada. Uh, where roughly if you plant like 1% of PBY, uh, you could lose from like a, a $2 to $3 uh, for each percent of, a, of, of PBY uh, planted, planted in the field. And it could be 
up to uh, uh, $80 uh, per acre if you plant like uh, somewhere between 9 to 10 percent of PBY. So in, but as I had shown one of the slide, um, the cost of uh, protection really combined use of insecticide and mineral oil is close to $300 to $350, depending on how many sprays you are going to use. So if we assume that it's just on a very conservative side, if we are going to get 250, 100 weight yield per acre, the based on that $350 cost, it could be probably $1.50 to $2 or maybe $2.50 uh, per hundred weight. So, so it's not it's not really that expensive, but that gives you uh, a peace of mind and good quality seed for the next crop. Thank you, Mathresh. And how do producers protect the new chemistry in Safina? Yeah, so first, Safina, we recommend um, spraying no more than two times throughout the year, and then make sure you're always rotating with uh, different insecticide products, something that ha would be in a different crop group. So Safina is a 9D, uh, but we would recommend uh, for resistance management to rotate to something that is not a 9. There's other products out there that are 9B, so your better rotation would be to be something that isn't a 9. Um, and just so we can protect all of the chemistries we're using right now. Yeah, thanks. Thank you, Anne. Um, Mathresh, what is the importance of cataloging the effects of each PBY strain on commercially important potato varieties? Um, there, there are several um, um, uh, advantages of uh, doing that uh, uh, screening program, really. Um, so different varieties show um, different kind of symptoms depending on what strains they are infected with. So, for example, like most of the varieties before when common strain was present, uh, they used to show uh, good mosaic symptom, but with the novel recombinant strains, uh, these varieties are showing very cryptic symptom. So, um, based on the number of varieties which we did, uh, close to 30 varieties, we selected most of those ones from different provinces where they were grown at large scale. So now we know that which variety shows what kind of symptom and, and whether some of those varieties, if infected with the necrotic strain, whether they show symptom in the tubers or not. So we have produced a book and also we'll be putting that information on our uh, uh, website and also it will be linked to uh, CSC website so growers, they are interested, they can go or people can go and, and look at, uh, at that link and see which variety produces what kind of symptom and also we have uh, calculated the yield loss based on primary infection and also secondary infection when, when the infected tubers are planted. So cataloging uh, those varieties with these strains gives us the wide range of knowledge on symptom expression, yield loss, and symptom expression in, in tubers also. Thank you. Um, Mathresh, what progress is being made by researchers and breeders in their search for resistant varieties? Um, as I mentioned in my talk, uh, like we had uh, collaborated some work with the Agriculture Canada, and uh, so they have developed uh, um, a marker uh, which, um, before, if you are uh, breeding a variety, it takes almost like uh, five, six years before you can you can put in the field and 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 then see the symptom. But by using this technology, they can screen hundreds of different genotypes for that marker which provides the for that gene which provides the resistance to uh, PBY. So that has been implemented in in breeding program uh, as far as I know with Agriculture Canada here. And also, uh, there are some, some different kind of resistance genes, like uh, extreme resistance and, and hyper-resistance. Uh, 
is being incorporated in some of the varieties which are coming, like for example, that uh, a variety was released from US uh, program, plastic Asset, that's very uh, resistant uh, for PBOI. So there are several varieties are, are coming up which are either resistant or immune to PBOI, and also we found in our program, which uh, during a screening we found Musica and uh, Eva, there are two varieties, they are very resistant to PBOI. So, so we are hoping in, in future some of these uh, uh, varieties or lines which are resistant will be released as a commercial variety. Thank you so much, Matt. Well, that appears to be all the time we have today for questions, but I'd like to ask for any last comments from our speakers. Mathresh, we can start with you if you have any last comments. Um, I would say just um, uh, like there is no single solution to manage PBY, as it is spread by a different uh, uh, aphid species, so we have to uh, focus on uh, like an integrated uh, uh, management system using uh, good quality seed and then start spraying early with uh, insecticide and, and mineral oil and that way you can produce the good, good crop at the end and, uh, and also I would like to thank, uh, thank all the sponsors for this webinar and all the um, uh, listeners there. Thank you. Thank you, Mathresh. And Anne, do you have any other comments for our listeners today? Um, just uh, thank you for listening in, and also we're uh, looking forward to having uh, Safina registered for next season, and hopefully once registration comes through, we'll have even more information to share with our customers. So thank you. Thank you so much, Anne. Well, I'd like to thank both of our speakers for sharing their insights and expertise uh, during this SpudSmart webinar on managing potato virus Y. I'd also like to thank our sponsors today, BASF and McCain, for their support. Uh, this webinar will be available on spudsmart.com if you'd like to view it again. And on behalf of the team at SpudSmart, I'd like to say thank you for all participating, and I hope you go on to have a fabulous day.